Hi, Elaine here from MarkerGeek.com. Today I've got a fun uh, shaker card to share with you, uh, created using some Stamping Bella stamps and uh, Distress Oxides, which is not really a surprise at the moment. Um, I used Distress Oxides in a few different ways on this card. I started out by creating uh, a Distress Oxide background piece which I used to paper piece the mermaid tail. That's the one I'm creating right now. I used a different Bristol paper uh, to the one that I usually use. Uh, you'll find that different types of paper will give you slightly different results, different effects. So it's worth experimenting. Normally I use the Strathmore Bristol Smooth Surface um, paper. On this particular piece, I used the Strathmore Bristol Vellum Surface. I find for this particular technique, it gives me some really interesting results and effects that are slightly different to the effects that I get on the smooth surface. Um, so basically I'm just smooshing the ink pads down on a craft mat and then picking up and spritzing with water and then picking up the ink on my paper. The first pass I kind of just take what I get and dry it and then start picking up more colour. So on the first pass I'm not really too fussy about the result that I get because because of the pigment properties of these inks they will layer on top of each other and you will be able to see each colour separately um, which is one of the really fantastic things about these particular inks. The important thing to remember um, when layering Distress Oxides is to dry between each layer if you want to get the colours to lay on top of each other uh, rather than blend. Um, if you dry between each layer, the colours will sit on top of each other and layer and create these beautiful effects. Uh, also, the um, water will create um, the sort of oxidised effects that you get with these particular inks. Um, I love doing this. It's actually, it's a lot easier on the hands um, than blending using a blending tool. Um, which is one reason I particularly like it, as I get a few issues um, with my wrist. Uh, so while I still do like to do um, sort of blending with a blending tool, I do really enjoy doing this particular technique. Um, so yeah, that's that done. And now I'm using a bottle of uh, Glimmer Mist from Tattered Angels, which I've had forever along with uh, some clean water in the Distress Sprayer. And I think I've mentioned recently that I only recently picked up the Distress Sprayer bottle and I really love um, the way that you can very easily vary the droplets of water that you get. When I was using a kind of standard spray bottle, this was a little bit more difficult. So yeah, just getting some really nice shimmer with that uh, glimmer mist. You could also use something like Perfect Pearls uh, in a spray bottle filled with water. I'm just trying to use up some um, glimmer mist that I've had for ages. Here I'm creating the background piece uh, for the shaker card. So I did the same thing, smooshed some ink down on the craft mat, picked it up and I'm kind of layering it a little bit. I'm not trying to get the same sort of effects that I did with the first piece. Um, here I'm just kind of trying to get a sort of interesting watery looking background. And in a second I'm going to grab a stencil um, from the Crafters Workshop and just to create some interest. I'm not using it to create a sharp um, stenciled image. Uh, initially I use um, some water and a baby wipe just to pick up a little bit of the colour just to give kind of a ghostly effect and then I go back in with a blending tool and um, some Distress Oxide ink, I think it was maybe Cracked Pistachio, to uh, lay over the top just to give some more interest. This was really, I didn't want it to be a crisp um, background 
uh, because I didn't want it to draw focus from the main elements of the card. I just wanted to give a little bit of interest in the back of that shaker element. Um, so yeah, this is where I grab the craft pistachio. And then when all this is done, I am going to move on to stamping my mermaid from the Stamping Bella Tiny Towny Mermaid set. Um, I love this stamp set. I begged Emily for ages to create um, some new mermaid stamps and I absolutely fell in love with the Tiny Towny that we got. Uh, she comes in a set uh, with some other elements that you can use for scene building. I just used the mermaid on this particular card. And I'm using the uh, background piece that I created initially in this video. And in my Misty, I'm going to use my acetate sheet, Got a little piece of acetate that you often see me using in videos for lining rubber stamps up. And basically I use that to line up that mermaid tail just where I want it um, to get the textured area that I want. Um, so I took a while doing this and I actually I stamped her several times so that I could use this piece to create several mermaids. I'm only going to use one in this card, but there you go, you can see. And there I'm trimming it out, fussy cutting that tail. Uh, and I'm using, I'm going to use, when all the colouring is done, I'm going to use the coordinating die set for the mermaid stamp uh, to cut out my coloured image and then I will layer this um, fussy cut tail on the top. And here I'm getting into the colouring. Um, I'm going to pop some music on in a minute. I will say that today I'm using um, Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock to colour on as opposed to the cheaper paper mill direct that I've been using recently with my polychromos pencils. Um, you do get different results. Uh, colouring on the Bristol smooth surface gives you smoother results. It's less textured, it is smoother than the paper mill cardstock uh, and the, the pencils do still blend and layer beautifully. I would say that the effect is a little bit better. It's nicer than the paper mill cardstock. However, it is more expensive. Um, I would use either depending on what I'm creating. Um, and yeah, I've sped up the coloring, obviously, or this video would be even longer than it already is. If you're not into the coloring portion, please do just skip ahead and I will come back to you uh, for the finishing of the shaker card.
with the uh, colouring of the mermaid finished, apart from that tail, I was really happy with how she turned out. I had great fun colouring this image. It took a while, as all pencil colouring does, but it's just, it's great fun and I love the results. Um, when I finished, I'm just adding here, you can see I'm just adding some extra little dark details in the shadow areas just to make things pop a little bit more. Um, that mermaid tail was going to look a little bit flat, obviously, um, when placed on top of the image with all of the shading and depth in the rest of the image. So I'm just using my pencils to add some shading uh, to areas of the image, uh, to areas of the tail just to bring it to life a little bit more uh, and in the end it looks really beautiful with all that texture from the distress oxide so working on the tail part was just so easy in comparison to trying to create a similar sort of effect and texture and interest with just colored pencils so i, I really love this technique for creating mermaid tails and also as you've seen previously in other videos um, butterfly wings and that sort of thing. Um, it could also be used to create some beautiful dresses with interesting patterns and details. Um, and also maybe flowers would also be really interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm just adding those details and, and pencils go really beautifully uh, over the top of the Distress Oxides. I particularly like the Polychromos pencils for this. They're not quite as opaque as the Prismacolor pencils, um, which has its benefits, meaning that I'm not losing too much of the um, Distress Oxide sort of texture. When it comes to white pencils, uh, the Prismacolor can be better for adding things like highlights in at the end because it is more opaque. Here you can see I've die cut the uh, mermaid. Um, she came out absolutely beautifully and adding that tail on with the shading, just it looks so much more interesting and lively. I'm using my preferred liquid adhesive, Fabri-Tac, just to um, layer that tail on top. Um, somebody asked me uh, in the comments recently about the Fabri-Tac glue, um, that sometimes you can experience that it thickens and is harder to get out of the bottle. Um, there's a really easy fix for this. It is a solvent based glue um, and you can use acetone, just a little bit of pure acetone um, added to the bottle will help to thin it. And um, this is a tip that they actually provide. If you read the small print on the side of the bottle, um, you will also find that tip there. Um, but it's a really easy way of fixing that issue because yes it does sometimes get a little bit thick and hard to get out of the bottle. Here I'm creating uh, the shaker element. Um, in my previous shaker card video you would have seen that I was um, having a bit of a whinge about fun foam um, using this exact same die which is the stitch rectangle frames from MFT. Um, here I cut as you would have seen I cut um, the frame from uh, a sort of pearlescent cardstock and then I also cut a few I think three or four from a very thick cardstock from Paper Mill Direct which I will link in my blog post. Um, it's so thick that the dye doesn't cut right through it which is why you saw me um, finishing off the cuts with a craft knife. It cut most of the way through the card but I just needed to trace around it with a craft knife to free those die cuts. I love how this one turned out. The shaker element is really sturdy and um, it looks really neat uh, and I much prefer it to the result that I got with the fun foam uh, and also to using um, just foam tape. Here you can see I'm applying the uh, acetate for the window of the shaker card to that top die cut that's going to go on the top. I'm just popping uh, the shaker part on a card base uh, using the Fabri-Tac glue. I used the score tape to attach the acetate um, so that I knew that it would adhere nicely. Um, Fabri-Tac does work on things like plastic, um, but I just wanted to be sure um, and I also wanted it to be nice and clean and fast. 
I wasn't sure how long it would take for the um, Fabri-Tac to dry on the acetate. Here I've got some fantastic shaker mixes and sequins from Lucy's Cards. I will pop a link to these uh, in the description below and on my blog post. These are new out. I only got them um, this week and they are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I order directly from Lucy here in the UK, um, but I think in the US, uh, I think Simon Says Stamp may um, stock them, or I'm pretty sure Lucy also um, dispatches internationally. They really are gorgeous. She puts together some fantastic um, shaker mixes, um, and I'm just a happy customer. I'm not sponsored. Um, I just absolutely love her shaker mixes. Um, resisting the temptation to hoard them um, and actually using them on this card, which is quite amazing. I'm just adding a few extra beads and things in um, from my stash. And then I'm gonna seal up that shaker element, ready to pop um, my mermaid on the front. Uh, I am also, I, did, I wasn't sure uh, as I'm often not sure when I start out creating a card, exactly what I was going to do for the sentiment. Um, I had initially planned on using a sentiment from the Stamping Bella under the sea sentiment set and maybe popping it on, um, maybe heat embossing it on some black cardstock and popping it on the front. I decided that I wanted to go for something a little bolder and simpler. So I grabbed a word die from my stash. I think it's a paper smooches word die um, from a set they had um, of various hello dies. Here it is. Yep, it's paper smooches. I grabbed a piece of pearlescent paper, applied some stick it adhesive to the back um, because I hate fiddling with gluing um, smaller die cuts. And then I die cut, um, no, I then uh, did some distress oxide blending on the pearlescent paper uh, before I die cut the word. Initially, I was thinking about just leaving it white, but I thought that might be a bit bland and boring. Then I was thinking about doing it in black and I thought that might be a little bit too much. So then I decided, and I'm really glad that I did, to grab um, picked raspberry and wilted violet um, distress inks, distress oxides rather, and just created a little blended piece, um, use some water for some um, water droplet effects, and then die cut from that. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I will say that I'm not too sure about how um, well the stick it adhesive is going to stay in place on the acetate. I didn't really think about that beforehand. I think it may slide around a little bit, um, I'm not too worried about that at this point, but it may be worth bearing in mind that it may be better to use something like glossy accents um, or a different type of glue to glue the uh, word down. Um, you can also get score tape in sheets, which I do have somewhere, which may have been a better option. Um, Stick It works really nicely on all sorts of things like cardstock etc but maybe for the acetate it's not such a great choice. I then um, stuck the mermaid down using glossy accents just to make sure she'd stay put and that is the shaker card. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today's video if you have please do like and subscribe and uh, you can check the description below for a link to my blog post where you will find all the information including links uh, to the stamps and all the other products. Um, so thank you for joining me and I will catch you next time.